Hello there, yeah. and we are live. Now. Hello, good evening, and welcome. It is 8 p.m. UK time on Thursday, um, and we are. My name is Tia Vandor. I am the uh, executive producer of Time of the Sixth Sun. In the window below, you have Nikki Luna Williams, who is the writer, director, producer of this amazing movie and documentary series. And in the window over here, we have our lovely friend Jorge Luis Delgado, who is joining us all the way from uh, Lima in Peru. Good evening to you, or good morning for you. It's, it's the afternoon oh, well. of your time. <laughs> good afternoon, great honor. <laughs> it's, it, it's nice to see Luna, to see our friends from, uh, from Lake Titicaca. It was uh, 11 years ago, huh? 2007, like, 13 two, years ago. Oh, right, that's right. Well, you know, the yeah. recycles, every period of time, you know, we have to reconnect again like yeah. all life you know it is in cycles in the circles we keep meeting again you know it's, it's just fantastic life huh? that's oh, true so, so we're just we, we just allow people time to come in jorge and yeah. uh you got that Taya? yeah yeah we're all good everything, everything seems to be working i just so when I look down, it's not because I'm being rude, it's because I'm checking, with, we're on live on Facebook uh, page, our Facebook group, and also on YouTube as well. And um, so if, when I, if I look away from the camera and I'm looking around my screen, it's not because I'm bored, it's because I'm looking at different screens and reading the comments and all sorts of things. So <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good. So, so, Jorge, it has been 13 years since we saw each other. 13, wow. Yeah. So how that is how is life for you right now with these very strange situations in the world? Well, you know, uh, we've been talking for long periods of time about the new cycle, about the Pachacuti. In the Andean world, we believe that uh, uh, we have everything in cycles. All life we experience in cycles. And uh, we had the last Pachacuti more than 500 years ago when uh, our ancestors, the elders and the Inca period, you know, they, they saw some people arriving, some foreigners arriving to the sacred lands of the Incas so they thought that uh, it is the Pachacuti, it's the night arriving. Mm. When was that? You know, it was in 1492. Okay, so... Can you just explain cycle... what Pachacuti is for people who don't know? Yes, this is the point. So we have the cycle of 1,000 years. 500 years daytime, 500 years nighttime. When our friends, the Spaniards arrive, they arrive by a sunset, okay? Mm -hmm. So in that sunset, it was start to disappear the light, start to be more, uh, uh, the darkness arriving, start to disappear, eyes, we start to forget, we start to become sleepy, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but, like the day and the night, you know, uh, we had to go through the night. By some mysterious reason of the cosmos, we had to experience both, you know. So we go by the night. So 500 years later, we have the new day. When is that? 1992 to 2022 is when we see the process of the sun rising, okay? By 22, we will see the full sun. So everybody's gonna say, oh, it's real. It's there. It's the truth. Light is the truth. Life is the truth. And what is that light? We start to understand. So in the Pachacuti, in this amazing process, is when uh, everything that doesn't belong to the truth, what doesn't belong to the light, it falls down, okay? So it is like we return to our roots. We return to the essence. In all the 
Andean cultures always is not about to cut the leaves. It is about to go to the roots, to go to the essence. So when we start to go to our essence is what we call the Wilkakuti. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, Wilkakuti? Wilkakuti means the return to the light, the return to the sacredness. Even, you know, the solstice in June, we celebrate the Inti Raimi, Inti Sun Raimi festivity, the festivity of the sun. The new year also we call Wilkakuti. Well, you know, we have to remember ourselves in many small cycles, big cycles, that we have to return because we have that tendency as a humans to be distracted. We can be distracted very easy. So as children of the sun, as children of the mother earth, we go into our inner sun. We explore the wild of ourselves, our nature. That's what we call the salka, the non-domesticated part of us, the part of us that it is free, the part of us that is unique, the part of us that has to do with the special place, a special moment where we've been born, where we are experiencing life. So one of the, of the other names we use for this is the Taripai Pacha, the time to find ourselves. Yeah. So what we find from ourselves is that essence. In another ways is when we start to release the resistance to bloom, when we start to attract the hummingbird, when we start to share our nectar, our sweetness, mm. our beauty, our life. But first, we have to try it. We have to experience that sweetness. We have to accept that beauty. That is Abhyayala, the land that is always blooming. That was one of the names of our beloved continent that our ancestors used to use in the past. What was it again? Abhyayala. Abhyayala. Abhyayala is a name in many communities now we start to use, we start to remember as the always blooming land. And that comes from the Kuna communities that is from Colombia all the way to Panama. There, you know, we had many elders gatherings, you know, and we met you there, you know, in one of these beautiful gatherings. Uh, we organized many of these uh, encounters by some mysterious reason of the cosmos, you know, because sometimes we think we have to organize something, you know, planning, you know, to have some nice friendship, learn from somebody, but it's all a cosmic plan after all, you know? So it is fantastic that now many of these amazing legends, amazing words from the indigenous tradition, it makes much sense. Like this great name for divinity, you know, in the Inca tradition, we don't have a word for God, okay? We cannot translate God in Quechua, Aymara, no. In Ipukina, there isn't. But we have many words, many names of divine, of sacred. So one of these beautiful names is Pachaya Chacha. Pachaya Chacha. It is one of the names. Before we used to believe that it's like somebody up there that is manipulating everything. Mm -hmm. But as we start to grow, as we start to be more aware, we start to understand that Pachaya Chacha is all life remembering us 
teaching us, bring, bringing the awareness from inside out. So every experience of life we go through, it is for that purpose. It is really for blooming. It is really for expansion of consciousness. So when we put together all these names of divinity, you know, like Ilya Texe, Kaya, Muyo, Apu, Kondishi, Wiracocha, Pachachachi, Pachacama, Welga, you know, there could be so many others according to different regions. If we put together all that, it's like to say the spiral of the infinite consciousness. Mm. So when we are talking about the Andean world, we are talking about many nations, that each nation brings amazing contribution to live in harmony with the Mother Earth and the Father Son, in gratitude for our lives. Remember, our cultures brought a community, nations, a continent, almost all the continent. You know, this Tawantinsuyo, zero poverty. Nobody was starving. Mm -hmm. But the most important, the Ayin Kausai, or in Aymara, Suma Kabanya, they've been able to live in harmony with all the expressions of life. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you talk about the expansion of consciousness, Jorge, just to backtrack for a moment, but when we did the global meditation uh, two weeks ago, last week, 10 days ago, I don't know, but uh, we started the meditation by bringing in the light from the great cosmic sun and bringing it down to the solar sun of the solar system and of our galaxy and down to the sun of our earth until we brought it down into ourselves. And suddenly I just remembered those beautiful words. Let me see if I've got it here. The, the words that you said in the film, and it just came to me. You said, we greet the sun and we let the father sun touch our inner sun and from our inner sun awake. We can send this energy, this light to all the cells of the body, the little suns in our cells awakening all the body so that you can experience the light in you, the light that you are. And I just suddenly, after all these years, I just really got it. And, wow. I, and it's so simple. You, I just have to, ex, we expand ourselves and just shine our light. And uh, it, it was a beautiful realization for me how simple that was. Oh, thank you for sharing. Mm. You know, you know, we've been doing that day also this anchoring the light from the galactic sun okay mm -hmm. so in the andean world we have many solar practices you know besides the practices we have in some nations about the offerings the mesa carrier tradition the kuyas the stones we are forgetting one of the most important practices which is the practice with the Father Son, the practice of the light, how we are the rays of the sun in this new day. What have we been told that we are privileged that we've been born between the night and the day. That is the most beautiful moment of the day everywhere in the world Wherever you are, you want to take the most beautiful picture. That will be by the sunrise or by the sunset, mm. okay? Because the impact of the light is just magnificent. Mm. So that practice with Inter Inti, which is the Hatun Inti, the galactic sun, in connection with the Inti Taita or Taita Inti, Mm -hmm. or Wilka Taita in Aymara, with the inner sun of the Inti Churi. This alignment of the three suns 
today is so vital. So we are aware of the eternal ray of light that we are. So if we just understand of the immortal children of the light that we are, if we understand that doesn't exist except the regeneration of the body, it makes a huge difference about the awareness of fear and love. So it's very interesting that when we are talking about to be children of the sun, even the word Inca, it brings already that message. From where comes the word Inca? What does it mean, Inca? Hmm. Most of the people translate as a children of the sun somewhere. That's good. But the etymology, the root of the word Inca, it comes from other two words. One is Inti, Inti, the father's son. And the other word is Kana. Kana is a ray that comes from the father's son. This ray is transparent, is clear, that touches. But we are also children of the Mother Earth, that we come from the heart of the Mother Earth, from Mama Pacha. Mm. From the heart of Mama Pacha, we come as a filament of light to the Kai Pacha. And we are here like a crystal, like a prism. And when this ray touches, we let flow the luminosity of the light. And we are aware that light has many qualities, but all the light is basically the power. It is the most important power. But what is that power? That power, that light is love. That love is in service. There is no love that's not in service. All love is always in service. All love is wise. All light is wise. So everybody that is aware that is light is wise. Everybody is children of the light, children of the sun, is aware it is love. But it's not only a concept. It's not only about to receive an initiation. It is about a way of life. It is about to bring the qualities of the light. So what kind of qualities of the light we are talking about? We are talking about all the teachings that every single day the Father Son brings to us. For example, the first one. Before the very, very dark night, before the sunrise, the first quality start to arrive, that encounter of the mother and the father. It is clarity. So it's so vital for us to clarify the yeah. night. Because at the night, we have a different belief than at the daytime. At the night, we believe in things. That is what we are releasing now, okay? We are entering into the day when we start to believe in light, to believe in love, to believe in the wisdom more than just in the knowledge. We don't need just bright minds. It's when we start to need the bright souls, the bright hearts. So when we start to be aware that very clear that we come from the love of Pachamama and Pachatata because they love each other so much from that love we come here. And that love Pachamama, Pachatata, the Cosmic Mother, Cosmic Father, Divine Mother, Divine Father, we are here. 
and they are anchored in each heart. We are with that power. Everybody has that power. Everybody means the good one, the less good ones too. I mean, less good one is just a point of view. Everybody <laughs> is that light, you know? So yeah. when we are talking about this quality of clarity, is so powerful to clarify all the histories. In our tradition, the past, it's not behind. The past is in front of us. You know, in Aymara, Naira is the I, but also Naira is the past. So we see with the past, the point of view comes from the past. Yeah. And the problem most of the time is the point of view. So when we start to clarify the densities that we experience in our lives, that the humans, we have the tendency to be attached to the heavy energies more than to the refined energies. The joyful experiences, we forgot them easily. We remember much more easy the heavy energies. What is the heavy energy? What's the hucha? Hucha, heavy energy, is all the energies we experience in our lives that doesn't come from love. Obviously, it starts with fear, then anger, then resentment. So we create a heavy energy body in the emotional body, and it is alive, and we need to feed it. And that's why most of the people, we try to feed that, trying to get the bad news. That's why all the journals, all the, the journalists, the best they can sell is the heavy energies. What's wrong in the world? You know, the good news doesn't sell for them. But in reality, what we are doing is we are feeding heavy energy body and if we don't find heavy energies around, we make them. We create those, you know, complaining, creating situations, even with our own relation, the closest relations. Because, you know, if we are not comfortable with ourselves, we are not comfortable with anybody. But of course, it's their fault. Hmm? So <laughs> always somebody's fault. Huh? So. <laughs> When we are talking about clarity, we can go much, much deeper because we have to be very clear where we are going. If we are really coming from the heart in all our activities, even what we eat, what we drink, how we sleep, what time we sleep, how many hours, the way how we walk, the dances, all the daily life because in the night it was a different belief it was a different priority now we start to awakening of course our ancestors show us the ways of course we didn't expect it's gonna be so dramatic we didn't expect that is going to be for everybody, without exception, you know? Everyone has the great opportunity to shine the new light. But this light, how we can anchor in the new day? By being love. So we have to love ourselves. But how we love ourselves if we are not comfortable with ourselves? We need to process. We need to manage all this heavy energy. In the underworld, we have so many modalities to deal with the heavy energy. The mother is always ready for us. It's ready to assist us, to eat the heavy energies. Or the cosmic mother with the great portal of the sacred empty by this by the Southern Cross. The elements, everybody, the power animals, the apukunas, the mother sea, the mother lake, and all the rainbow mothers, and all the mothers with the mother moon. We can do a lot of, a lot of ceremonies, practices. So it's so rich. 
So very simple, without complication, just take off the shoes and surrender with the mother and process whatever we don't like in our lives. We start to harmonize. What kind of relations we mention with the mother, the father, with the family. Very important, the first opportunity to expand our love, service, and wisdom. The closest is a portal. In this portal, you know, we can expand. What is love? Love is generosity, is patience, is flexibility. Love doesn't need to be rational, doesn't need to be right or wrong. It is just to share without judging. I mean, if we experience love with ourselves, we can understand much clearer what does it mean to be in front of the other soul has the honor to be in front of that presence of light. That's the family, the blood family. Well, some people say, you know, I prefer my friends because uh, I choose my friends. I don't choose my family. I never do. <laughs> but this is our first cosmic, a cosmic experience, the opportunity to expand. But of course, the other families is also important. On the left side, the neighbors, but not only the human neighbors, the plants, the animals, the stone people. The tricky one is the future, the past that is in front. You know, until when we have to deal with it, until we love all our past. You we were saying... When we spoke before, Jorge, you were saying, you know, it's really a time of asking those deep questions, each of us to ourselves. And mm -hmm. it was asking the question of how is your love with the mother, with the mother earth? Yes. You know, how, how is that? What have you been doing the last few years? How do you relate exactly. to her? And um, also, do we eat, do we sleep, walk, breathe? Do we do all of that truly from the heart or the mind? And I certainly can answer for many people in the West, uh, myself included. We're very heady. Yeah. Yes. You know, the, the ways how we've been trying, everybody, we go to the school. Everybody, we go primary school, secondary school. Some of us, we go to universities and everywhere. The students and the teachers, we are 100% in the mind, mm -hmm. successfully. Where we learn yeah. to expand our love. Where we learn to shine from the soul. We just try to shine from the mind. It's all about the mind. So somebody said, I, th I think then I exist. And sometimes we think we are very smart, believing that. But the point is really about the feeling. How you speak only from the mind or from your heart. When you come from your heart, for example, you know that you are writing in the other person's heart. And when you do that, you cannot erase whatever you are writing if you made a mistake, mm. unless the one of the heart accept to clean it, yeah. to erase. But be so careful how we are talking and learning to listen, not only with the ears, not only thinking that we are be quiet in the mind, we are feeling it. For example, the great Amuki, the great Amuki, Amuki is the silence, from the small silence to connect with the big silence. 
so we can connect, for example, with the silence of Machu Picchu right now. That is it, a completely silence. Nobody's there. It's just amazing the feeling. If you've been there, you can feel it, that silence in the heart. You can dream of the power places that today they are talking without interference. We can start to be aware that all the Mother Earth, it is healing itself. Many times the ego of the humans, we say, oh, I am a healer of the Mother Earth. I am guardian of the Mother Earth. Really? What needs the Mother Earth we do to heal the Mother? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. When we do nothing, the Mother heals itself, that we can see those days. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Maybe we should have that every year. Like in the Indian world, you know, the crops will rotate every five years. Mm -hmm. Four years planting and one year has to rest. Yeah. So we believe in the production only. In the old times when we been planting, it was not only about to get the product. It was about weaving. What we are weaving? We are weaving the cloth of the Mother Earth. Mm. We don't want to see the Mother naked. We want to see the Mother Earth with the most beautiful cloth. That's why we create many places with the most beautiful gardens. And that is part of our old tradition. We have in our blood, it's in our, in, in our consciousness. The only thing that sometimes we think we are too busy, now we are awakening in another way of life. Now we start to understand what we really have is time. Time is with us and we have a different value of it. We have the opportunity to observe the different aspects of life that we need to give a noble view, we need to process. So we can understand that everything is sacred. All the Mother Earth is sacred. All is a temple. Macro, micro. Yes. Beautiful. Jorge, you were talking earlier about hucha. And um, Monique in London has asked this question. How do we clear the heavy energies? So in Peru, you have the Paco you can go to see who will give you a hucha cleansing. But, but what do people do if they want to just, what advice would you give if they just want to try to clear some of that heavy energy themselves? Well, we can have many ways. One of the ways is with the Mother Earth. Other way with the sea, with the river. We go to the beach, for example, and we can take stone, we take it by the navel, okay, or by the solar plexus. And we put the intent first with the Father Son, with the power who are witnessing the mountains or the directions, mm -hmm. depending the tradition, you create the, you open the space, or you just start with a prayer, the intent, and you pull out whatever you don't want to carry with you anymore. The experience from the past, if you put that, you blow that, you feel here, and sometimes it will show up where in the physical body is. Suddenly you can touch the neck, you can touch the back, you can touch the legs, the knees, you know, different parts of the body. You feel, you have, it jumps, okay? and you throw it to the river. Sometimes you know exactly why you are feeling like that. Because in the childhood, because I was rejected, because I was betrayed, betrayed, or because I lost, because I have this guilty feeling, because there is so many, but sometimes we don't remember 
Why? There is a mysterious, it's a mystery to the law. Mm. Oh, well, probably you don't remember because it is from past lives. Or maybe it's from the lineage. So what we do is we go to Mama Cocha, for example, in Titicaca, we go to the beach. And we do the offering in gratitude for our lives. And then we stand up with the open arms and we give permission to the mother sea, to the mother lake, to pull out whatever wow. doesn't belong to us that we are carrying from the ancestors, whatever we don't remember that doesn't come from the light. So it's so magical. The key is to give permission when we don't remember. And the other ways, of course, is to pull out. Then is really when we start to understand the meaning of what happened to you or what happened for you. Mm. Yeah. I love that. To you or for you. <laughs> yeah. Victim or uh, creator. We have um, another question here. So, like, so, Nikki, do you want to go first? Uh, yes, just to get us on track, because um, well, of course we're on track. But we were we had a little conversation earlier, Jorge and myself, and you were saying that uh, you've been talking a lot recently about the COVID nineteen or coronavirus, whatever we name it, and you were saying about the connection with the solar sun and vitamin D. That vitamin D connection. Could you talk about that briefly? Oh, I'm yeah, of course. Put, okay, I'm going to put you full screen because there's a lot of people watching on yeah. mobile phones on tablets that can't see you. So we are still here, but I'm just going to make you big and I'll bring you, I'll bring us back when we, when it's time for us to talk again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So one of the most important aspects to go through it is really about the immune system. And one of the most important vitamins for the immune system is vitamin D. The most important source of vitamin D is the sun. You know, the father's son is so vital for us because it nurtures the soul and makes stronger the immune system. One of the reasons why the children of the sun, the Incas choose the highlands, you know, because they could choose the coast of Lima or the coast or the lower parts of the jungle, but we don't have sun all the year round. But in Cusco, Lake Titicaca area, all the highlands, we have sunny days, even in the rainy season. All the year we have sun. We have rain for some hours, but all the year. That's why, for example, now, where we have less impact of the coronavirus is in all the highlands, like in Bolivia highlands, La Paz, Oruro, Puno, Cusco, you know, all the, the highlands is less even in the Himalayas, in Tibet, you know, it is in less, less than any place. It is because we get the sun by the skin. And that makes very powerful the, the cells. And it works in different levels in the electronic and the nervous system. The presence of the light of the Father Son is the most healing. We forgot and we learn to escape from the sun. But we know from all the native cultures that is not dangerous. But of course, if you are too many hours, you know, and you are not used to, we suggest to don't do, you just need 10, 20 minutes 
because nowadays people has a tendency to stay inside in the office or inside at home. The importance of our practices is amazing nowadays because many of these solar practices is about to expand that light is about to remember the light in our body. Mm. One day I was opening my arms to the Father Son, happy there at the sunrise. And one of the elders was watching me and says, oh, when I finished, he says, oh, you've been greeting yourself. And I said, no, I was greeting the Father Son. And he said, wait a moment, do you greet yourself? I said, yes. So how I greet myself as you are doing. He said, no, I was greeting the sun. He says, yes, but it's the same. What do you mean? As you greet the sun, you greet yourself because you are the sun. Because when you remember the inner sun, when you let the light of the father's sun touch your inner sun, okay? What you are doing is you are giving health. You are giving light. That's why in, in Spanish, salute that health, that to give, to give good health, good vibration. How we give good vibration, okay? We give in the mind, in the feeling, in the emotions. So when we see that inner sun shining, it awakes all the cells. And all the cells as a little sun start to awaken. And what is that light in each sun, in each cell? It is love that is in service and it is wise. And each cell is so wise. Does it need a special training to learn the function? Does it need a special initiation? Every cell just has the wisdom what exactly has to do. We don't really need any medicine. We have to remember ourselves, those gifts with the light that comes from the Father Son, from the Mother Earth, yeah. in what we eat. Fortun unfortunately, we change so much, now we need supplements. We are changing, you know, keeping only one product. We lost many nutrients with the Mother Earth. So some products is not complete. But anyway, now in this process, we are returning to nature. But still, it's the light of the Father Son and the light of the Mother Earth. So the connection with the inner sun is vital. The remembering of that, we open the arms. When we see ourselves as light in itself, suddenly we can see all our body, the bubble of light. That is the popcorn, the bubble of light shining. Then we start the day with love, without fear. Beautiful. So whatever we have to do the day, we can share it from the heart. Beautiful. So this is our extra. If we want to manifest an extraordinary day, an extraordinary year, extraordinary life, we just have to bring that light and share it. This is the key. This is the primordial key for an extraordinary life. So what's the difference between ordinary life and extraordinary life? Extra, what is that extra? Our own light. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little song that you might like, Jorge, not that I want to particularly okay. sing. But when I was very sick a few years ago, I sang every day, I sang this song. And it's, uh, every little cell in my body is healthy. Every little cell is healthy and free. And it beautiful. Goes, oh, that's beautiful. You just sing to yourselves. It's beautiful. Oh, it's such fantastic. a simple thing. It's a children's song. Yeah. You know, we are children. We, we, children we of think the sun. 
Yeah, yeah, every, every children of the sun and all, as you notice, all the Andean, the native traditions is very simple, very deep and very wise. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the way in the simplicity, with humility, we don't really need to have all the titles, just the way how we experience life how we are in service to the beloved Mother Earth, how we are in service to the Father Son, how we are in gratitude. So some people say, no, it's easy to be in service to the Mother Earth, but to the Father Son, it's not going to be easy. Yes, it's easy. You share the qualities of the Father Son. That's the way, you know. So but you have to embody that, you know. We need to anchor that with the Mother Earth because the Mother Earth loves the Father Son. Shall we go to some of our extraordinary viewers and see what they have to, what wisdom they have to share and maybe they have some questions, Teo? Yeah, let's pull up this one. so beautiful, Jorge. From Celeste, she says, Asquali, Question, do you have prophecies about spiritual leaders around the world canceling sacred solstice ceremonies? Well, you know, the, the prophecies, there are many legends. Some are very old. I, I am not sure about some, some of these prophecies, some others. Maybe it comes from the colonial period. Um, they talk about the return of the Inca. Okay, some people believe the Inca itself will return the Sapa Inca, you know, one Inca is the leader. Uh, I believe more that the Inca consciousness is returning from us, the children of the sun consciousness. So, it doesn't mean that it has to be born in the Tawantinsuyo of Peru or Bolivia. It is from all over the world and all the Mother Earth, all the children of the, the children of the sun in this beloved Mother Earth. We are Our bringing, tribe. Yes, mm -hmm. we are bringing that essence. Oh, so what happens is that in the solstices, equinoxes, zeniths, the father's son opens wider his arms. In some months, like in August, the mother earth opens wider her arms. So there is a special moments. Everything has moments, has a special moments because it has to do with different cycles, like the cycles of the moon, the cycles of the mother earth, the cycles of the sea, the cycles, every, everyone has cycles. And when we are, connecting the power places, the cycles with the cosmos. We are opening the opportunities to manifest in synchronicity and in coherence, the dreams that we can, we want to anchor in this reality. Mm. So that's why we have the rhymes, the celebrations of life. When we are grateful, when we know we are entering to a new season, when we have new weather, different expressions of all the family of light, all the family of the Mother Earth. What does it mean, family of the Mother Earth? Family of the Mother Earth is not only the ones, you know, the humans. We have that tendency to believe it's all about the humans, you know. When we talk about the Mother Earth, yes, the humans, yes. When we talk about what's the best, you know, it's about the humans, you know, the democracy, socialism, or whatever, capital. It's not really about any of that. It's really about consciousness. It is really about living harmony. That's what we call the alien causa. That is the Inca contribution to the world. Mm. It's not only about the humans. So we remember once again our family. We are children of the Mother Earth. Everybody who drinks that water, the milk of the Mother Earth, is our family. Mm. Very good. The waters. 
Well, hey, you've been talking a lot about, about Pachamama and about the earth. And, and one thing that when I spent some time studying about the Andean um, history last year was, was um, the, the reverence that the Peruvian and the Andean people give to the mountain spirits, to the Apus. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you share your thoughts on that, please? Yes. You know, we have to say, when I say the Mother Earth, Mama Pacha is Mother Earth, Pachamama is the cosmic mother, the divine mother. But her presence is also in the Mother Earth. Her presence is in the Mother Sea. Her presence is with the Mother Fire, with the Mother uh, Wind, with all the mothers, also with the Mother Moon. So as the feminine, the mothers, we also have the Apukunas, in general, most of it the masculine. Those are great souls. They choose as the physical bodies a mountain. Extraordinary souls. They are in service to life. Mm -hmm. The ones who condense the cosmic energies that sometimes is not easy for the families of the Mother Earth to digest for some animals, for some plants, because there is so much we are receiving, the support from all the cosmos. So the Apugunas, these great spirits, they are the masters, the teachers, the silent watchers. They are the ones who are assisting us in our process. And most of them, they have unique gifts. Most of them, they bring to us some blessings as we are devoted, as we connect with them. We can have an apple our, in our family. We believe that we are family of some of these apples. And it comes to us, we can recognize. For example, once I was connected as my family one apple that is not from this continent, but I have some apple from this continent. So the connection is amazing. When you are devoted, you are called and you go and you connect, but even through the distance, you can assist. As you connect with the inner silence, you connect with the silence of the apple and you can establish a communication. But of course, always you remember you are with them. You always remember like you are with the Mother Earth. Always you are blowing light. Okay? So you have coca leaves, you have some petals, you have something to eat. Even without words. Why do you blow? Your light. That's love. Love also is gratitude. For drinks, some drops to the mother and to the apples. So we are always walking with the apples, with the masters, with the mother earth. Beautiful. Beautiful. And always in gratitude. That's the point. That's <laughs> the law. Gratitude is a way of love. So we blow light. So what is important when we blow, what we blow is not just air. It comes from the heart. It comes from the inner sun. When you go to Peru, we blow quintus coca leaves. We don't just blow air, we blow light. Mm. We are blowing light. So we are blowing love. We are offering ourselves to be in service. We are blowing the inner wisdom. That is that yachai. We are recognizing the inner wisdom and the wisdom of the mountain or the cloud or the sun or the mother. Because yachai, Y-A-C-H-A-Y, is a palindrome word. You can read from both sides. It's the same. It's a word multidimensional. It's like a tapak, C-A-P-A-C or Kawak, C-A-W-A-C. You see, they see you. 
yeah, have yeah. That, the power, the access. It's like to connect with a quantum field, the access mm. in that awareness. Because when you are in that frequency, you are in an elevated state of consciousness where everything is possible. Beautiful. Thank you. Would you like another question from the from the audience? I just I just like to put this up here. Uh, Katrina has just said greetings from Romania, where the Orthodox people are celebrating Saint Jorge today, which means Jorge. So blessings to you. Munai sonko. Munai sonko, vaike panaikunas. We celebrate you, Jorge. We are all celebrating greetings you, to Jorge. my friend in Romania. I I have great great memories. I love Romania, you know, all these mountains, these etings, you know, like uh, in Marcawasi. I was impressed, you know, I have such a great family, you know, in many cities in Romania. Thank you. The so mountains in Romania Asia. are the Carpathian Mountains, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Many mysteries and many yeah. similarities with the mysteries of the mountains. You know, we did some uh, some of these uh, the inner world with the with the ancient alien programs. One of the last about the inner world, and uh, when I was talking with somebody from Romania, he was telling me it was something similar. You know, near Cusco, there is some places that it connects with some uh, uh, special beings that comes from the inner world. So mm -hmm. it's very very interesting. Uh, all all is only one one big body of the mother earth so it should be some similarities everywhere huh? absolutely all right let me let me put up another question here katrine um is asking is our solar system in balance between mother earth and father sun and then she says and also the other planets in our solar system well what we know is that uh in all the cycles, we have cycles to make the readjustments, okay? Everything has tendencies to move a little bit, but we need to bring back into balance, okay? Mm -hmm. Naturally, it happens with the father son, with the mother earth. Even more that all the time. However, we are in that spiral. We are repeating in circle, but it is expanding that spiral. It is coming more and more. The only thing is that our speed of learning or being aware or listening or understanding is a little bit slow because we are too busy in the mind. As we start to feel that light, as we start to feel love, if we really start to love ourselves, we will notice, we can experience. You know, some people doesn't believe in the spirit. It is like uh, some people doesn't believe in love because when we don't love ourselves, we cannot believe that is true. It's the same thing when we start to feel the inner sun when we start to be in our center we start to see life in a different way but when we are not in the center we can see that something is wrong outside because from the center we can always give the right interpretation but when, I mean, when we are in the center, we can dance with the cosmos. When we are not in the center, we're still dancing, but the situations makes us to dance. Okay? So we are not under control. When we are in the center, we can really dance and we can give the right interpretation. The father sons process is amazing. It is always sharing his love. So every day we go to get a bath 
of light is a bath of love. Mm -hmm. When we just know that love by loving ourselves, it's a huge difference to feel the Father's Son touching with that love. But if we are in fear, we see the same thing. Okay, we have to escape. Like when nowadays we are in sight, the real message is be in home, stay at home, but get in your heart. Be in your inner son. Because if you are in love, fear disappear. But if you are in fear, you have too much preoccupation. So the occupation in the inner sun, in that light, is really what makes us free of fear. Very good. Yeah, there's many people who are staying at home but maybe are um, distracting themselves when it's such an opportunity this time now to really do some of that work inside and connect with the heart. Ask those questions. Well, you know, there is a, there is a beautiful Lily history. The virus, it is not really the situation. It is just a messenger, okay? And the messenger is the one who delivers the message, we can say, and uh, is going to stay until we really get the message, okay? And uh, it's always like that. When we really get the message, is when we go to another step, to another place, to another momentum in the history. So I believe that it is already enough people in the world, enough children of the sun, children of the mother earth, processing, transforming, being aware is not about fear. We can feel that, but we don't have to let it control us. Mm -hmm. Because if we really trust in the light, mm -hmm. if we really trust in divinity, it is inside of us, makes a stronger immune system, it will come the light into some of our scientists it will bring the right medicine for the ones that has a little bit weak the immune system. And the third is the possibilities of the miracle that suddenly it disappears. Hmm. Mm, very good. A message. So, it's a very interesting. Uh, I, I, lo I love listening to. Each week when we do this on a Monday and a Thursday, Those listening different to perspectives. different perspectives of, of what this what this time has been brought to us, what we've manifested to, uh, to you know, to, to learn and to understand and to appreciate from it. Yeah. Very much. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jorge. Is a there, great honor. Uh, yeah. And we were talking earlier and saying that... Um, you were talking about the, the, the greeting the light on the 1st of August, which in Peru and in your ancient Aymara tradition, it's that is the day of the Mother Earth, whereas we here in the West have celebrated it two days ago. We call it Earth Day, but this is quite a recent thing. And mm -hmm. you were talking about the beautiful ceremonies all over Peru, and you celebrate all night in ceremony and greet the sun in the morning of the 1st of August, yeah? Yes, you know, this is the celebration with the Mother Earth. Father Sun solstice is equinoxes, but the Mother Earth, the mm -hmm. day is the 1st of August. So everybody, the 
31st of July, we are preparing the offering, all the goodies, you know, all kinds of sweet things, colorful things, the most delicious products we got in our lands. All we give back with much gratitude to the mother, with drinks, with with the best we get from the mother. Beautiful. And but also, of course, in the ceremony is a cleansing, is coca readings, many, many aspects all together. It's a long ceremony. Well, nowadays are a little bit shorter, but in the old times it was from very early in the morning all day and finish, you know, with dances, dancing. Most of the dances is the last stage of the of, of the ceremony. So this it continues all the month. That's why in August, most of the people, we have the tendency to get married. We believe wow. that the month when we have a special blessing from the Mother Earth, we say the Mother Earth is hot. So everybody try to get married the favorite month. In August. August, <laughs> August is the month. So we were saying that maybe... Uh, we'll we'll talk about it more on our Facebook page, but we, we'll we'll talk between us. But that mm -hmm. maybe we will do something on those first three days of August with time of the sixth sun, and we'll do um, some kind of webinar for three hours a day for three days or something. Oh, perfect! You know, we are we are doing a very beautiful. I didn't know that uh, we've been training to share by this special moment, mm -hmm. you know, ways to release, ways to clarify, ways to focus in our lives, how to bring the qualities of the light and how to process the new day, how to anchor the new habits. As you know, everybody knows that we can change habits how we change with another habits? What kind of habits is not useful anymore? What kind of habits doesn't bring a contribution for expansion of consciousness? We don't need those. So the way nowadays is much, much clear for each of us. And it will be a great honor for us to share. Beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So keep an eye on our Facebook page, guys, and we'll <laughs> okay. put some more up about that. Jorge, um, would you like to tell us a little bit about your um, beautiful book, Andean Awakening, an Inca Guide to Mystical Peru? I had a look on um, online earlier, and you get you've got everybody's giving you four star, five star reviews. People are saying it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Would you like to tell Andean us a little Awakening. bit about it? Well, this one is Andean Awakening. This one is in Amazon, but the last one is Inca Wisdom. Right. where we have many of the solar practices, where we have different kind of ceremonies, where we have the explanations of the seven religions, the seven harmonies, you know. And the other book is Machu Picchu, the city of the children of the sun. And right now we are, uh, we are finishing the book, The Eternal Ray of Light of the New Day. So, but these two, the, the, the second one, Inca Wisdom, they are selling in the United States and, of course, in Peru and maybe many bookstores. But probably in a few weeks, it will be in Amazon, too. But Andean Awakening is a, is a book that, you know, I did one book. Actually, I don't write, you know. It was just recorded okay. uh, as, a, as a guide, as a uh, 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 teacher or giving lectures about the Inca Inca wisdom, the Inca cosmovision, uh, we've been recording, and then from there came one book, and the publisher says, oh, here there is three books, so we made easy. The first one supposed to be Inca wisdom, but the most easy to write was the Andean Awakening, you know, uh, which, uh, which is a little bit more about my experiences, a little bit my history, but it brings how I start to understand the, the Inca uh, cosmology, the, my ancestors, the traditions, and how I was escaping, you know, from the spiritual, esoteric, shamanic stuff because I just wanted to be a very modern person. <laughs> mm. I guess there is there is no escape. <laughs> <laughs> 
when I was, there's a book that goes out with the film and I don't have the exact photo here, Jorge, but this was um, us filming um, um, on the right here, no, there. Yeah. And, um, and something happened that day. Oh, I'm not doing it very well. Something <laughs> happened that day where suddenly the sky turned totally black do you see the sky? It's almost black in the middle of the day. And suddenly you could see the reflection of the boats in the water. And they were big golden discs in the water. Oh. I'll send you one of those photos and I might put one up on the page. But it was an extraordinary moment. The sun. By the way, by the way, congratulations. You, you made an amazing job with all these movies. I highly recommend to all my friends, you know, Thank because you. there you have a lot of effort, you know, and I think it, it brings Both of us. a very important contribution so people in the world can enjoy all the light from different nations of all our family that is in action nowadays. Beautiful. Thank you. Our film actually tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, is it tomorrow? The 20, yeah, to over the weekend uh, for the next three days, people around the, in Germany are voting for our um, film because it's being nominated for a Cosmic Angel Award by the Cosmic Cine Festival. So anyone who's German who's out there listening, please go to their site. You'll see it on our page, but um, it's great. And, you know, the reason we did the photographs in the book with all the quotes from the film, from the elders, and also on the CDs, there's music, beautiful music, but over the top is the words coming back from all the speakers. Uh -huh. So it's like an echo of the film. That was the idea. Uh -huh. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I just love all the, the work you did, and I was so happy to see that the first – the movie, you know, it was inspired or it started at the Lake Titicaca with our gathering. That was a, a great honor for us. Good. I have got that picture for you in here. I just, I can, I can bring that up for you. Let me just uh, work some magic in the background here. And uh, where is it? Am I able to pull that up here? Pull just the technology. Just <laughs> a new page and do this and then do this one. And I click share. Then you should now see that page in the book. Oh, uh, so in the water underneath the boats, there was the like the look like the golden disc, you know, the reflection. Uh, wow! Yeah, this, this was the circle of reed boats. Yeah, you know, it, it was just fantastic gathering. Yeah. yeah, they had basically for the people watching, they had four boats, and they were the boatmen were anchoring them where the two boats would meet at the four corners. And it basically made a square of water in the middle. And all the beautiful, honorable elders all did their prayers and everything into Lake Titicaca. And, but it was a very held space. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. You wow. know, it was uh, so important. This one and the other one was the activation of the solar disk. Yeah. I think the most important gatherings we had with the most special guests from all over the world mm. or from most of the masters or teachers from different nations. That was really fantastic. And you know something? I was planning, I was dreaming, we can say, to organize something in Tibet, you know, like the masculine gathering of forgiveness for all the wars, the violence that the men we use in conquest of the natives or the wars between countries and all of that. And then maybe something we should do anyway but it was just something we felt that the masculine and the feminine at Lake Titicaca at yeah. the same time in prayer for a new beginning. So it just came to me now. I just wanted to share that dream. Yeah. I was about to say, 
I was about to say good luck with that, <laughs> with filming, <laughs> filming in Tibet. But hey, do you know what? This is a time where anything is possible. And I yes. share the same dream as you, is for us to hold gatherings, which are forgiveness ceremonies. Right now, I truly believe that's one of the most important things. Yes. Forgiveness of ourselves yeah. and forgiveness of others. Uh, this divine unity. Beautiful. Mm. We'll just talk say, about that more. Yeah. So we, we, we can talk uh, much more. And, uh, you know, it's everything possible. And uh, we know that uh, there is much in the mind, but in the mind uh, we can see difficulties. Yeah. But in reality, mm. it's more, more easy in the reality, in the life. We have the support mm. of all the family. So we are not alone. In the mind always will be the worry, but in the, in the light of love, for sure, we are more optimistic. Absolutely. I'll talk to my mate, HH. HH <laughs> -H, Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh. So does anybody else, I'm just going through the questions here, see if there's any more questions for Jorge. It's just loads of people just saying how much they're loving this and they're really enjoying that. And Elizabeth Lobo says, please do that. Forgive all wars. Thank you for showing the pictures. Those pictures, by the way, are in um, in the in the book, A Journey of Awakening, that um, Nikki uh, put together a lot. It's a 120-page photo book, which is available as an e-book in our digital uh -huh. access package. But photos from all the shoots over the years that we've yeah. filmed on. Beautiful pictures. Hmm. Thank you. There are some so beautiful that, what you showed was actually the ebook, the electronic version. Yeah, that's the e that's yeah. the e at the moment, we can't ship the physical packages out, so we so we have the digital access package available, and uh, lots and lots of you are taking that up because at the moment it's it's usually ninety seven dollars, and we're, we're doing it for thirty dollars off at the moment because people, um, you know, we understand are, are struggling sometimes financially, but there's nineteen and a half hours of content in there. It's not just the movie, but also the the full docu series episodes and everything. And if you just go to the, um, if those of you that haven't heard about it, if you just go to the website time of the six sun movie.com, there is a link on there where you can see that uh, the digital access package. And there's a video of me explaining exactly what you get. So yeah, 19 and a half hours of fantastic content. And it's not just the movie, but the deep dive into eight different subjects in like 45 to an hour and 20 minute documentary episodes yeah. that don't have to be watched sequentially. And, because Nikki, you shot over what a thousand hours or plus more footage, probably more. I, funnily <laughs> enough, had a vision in 2004, three years before Jorge and I met, and I remember thinking, well, just basically, I shot a lot of material everywhere I went because I had an idea that one day we might not be able to travel without vaccinations or something, we wouldn't be able to get on an airplane. So, I filmed a lot over the years. Thank goodness you did, because we've, yeah. we've got some wonderful... Has Jorge frozen? Is he still with us? Uh, he has gone very still. He's very <laughs> still. He's gone within. Jorge? Yeah. I think maybe he's dropped out. I think we may have lost Jorge. I was I was because Jorge's laptop wasn't working before we went live, which is why he was shooting from his mobile phone. And I was wondering uh, at what point was is that mobile phone actually going to... um. Run out, of battery. run out of battery. It uses a lot of juice when you're when you're doing anything live on your phone. Oh, oh he's back. back. Hello. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now we are here. Uh, I I think uh, I I don't know. It stopped, but uh, now yeah. we are again. Okay. Well <laughs> That's okay. Very good. good. So. So any more? We can, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Uh, well, anytime you wanna you wanna do uh, a. Um, a sharing, uh, we are always ready and uh, we will be doing those uh, webinars and uh, uh, I think uh, this is a very interesting, simple, easy way. You don't need a special training to understand and to do the practices. It doesn't have to do 
with a religion. It doesn't have to do with, uh, or, or it doesn't have to fight with any tradition because it's Inca spirituality that it is connected with all the roots of the spirituality in the world. I mean, there is only one spirituality. There is only one Father, Son, one Mother Earth. So it is simple and always we can remember. Most of the time we say, I'm not really teaching anything, except we are remembering each other. Mm. So in this remembering, we bring not only with the word saying, this I want to share with you. Many times we bring the questions because it's already the answer inside, but we need to remember. We need also some other, other friends can remember. As much we remember together, as much we pray together, as much we are in circle together, we are anchoring the new day. But the process is like the puma, lonely, one at a time. Mm. It is when we have the courage to pull out what we need to pull out. The puma journey, it's not really suffering. Suffering is optional. Could be some pains inside, but when we have the courage, after all, it's so joyful, joyful to be free of all the heaviness of these energies that doesn't come from love. Very good. A beautiful way to, to, to leave it. Is there anything you want to, anything else that you would like to say before we close this live talk? Is... It's very important to be focused, to be aware, to observe ourselves. Observing ourselves like the condor. Mm. The condor process, very simple, okay? Very practical, simple way. Four steps. The process is, starts with acceptance, separation, discernment with the heart, wisdom. The condor is soaring, looking for food. Mm. The food's there, arrives there, accepts it's there. The condor doesn't eat immediately, okay? It will separate from it. It will fly far, far, far away. Separation, second step. Third step. The big picture understands how is all this interconnected, how all this is interdependent, how is reciprocal, how is proportional. So in this discernment, we'll see if the condor will take this food or not, but suddenly, he sees next to the food, there is some hole with two baby pumas. The condor says, oh, the mother puma probably brought this food. Mm. So I will let these baby pumas eat. Mm. In the future, they will bring more food because they never finish all the food. The old condor always can finish all the food is there. Mm -hmm. So it's our choice what we take. And then we have the gift. We have the wisdom we get from it. So how we can manifest that? For mm -hmm. example, I have a, a sadness. Okay. And I say, no, it is because I am in the home. No, it's the weather. In the mind, we can lie. Mm. But in the emotional body, we cannot, it's there. Okay? Yeah. So we can do journaling. Mm. Okay? About the sadness when I 
I work this morning, it was there, no, then mm, at the lunchtime or no, at the evening, uh, before I start to write, it's better to do in the evening. Huh? The most important moments, you know, just by observing what you accept, you see in the big picture with the design, with the heart, because it's only the mind, uh, it was a good try. But if you bring your heart, always, you can understand the message. Yeah. You can remember something, you awake to something, and you understand what is the gift of it. Thank you. Blessings, Jorge. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jorge. It was beautiful. <laughs> I know we've so many, so many people writing to say thank you. Thank you for the three of you for sharing your light, love, service, wisdom. Thank you, Jorge. Uh, thank, you. thank you for the wisdom. It's coming in from all over the place, across YouTube you. and Facebook, and it's uh, it's lovely. We've got a nice one here saying, you have changed the world with time of the sixth sun in deepest oh. gratitude for you for following your own inner sun. Oh, blessings. <laughs> that is a beautiful way to finish. Oh. We will say good night to you and have a wonderful uh, rest of your week and we will be back live on monday night and um lynn franks uh, will be joining us um lynn franks has known nikki for a very long time features in time of the sixth sun um runs the seed network here in the united kingdom fascinating lady and she's going to be joining us eight o'clock on all i can say is she's absolutely fabulous <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> on monday night but i'll put up a live for that okay thank you so much i'm going to end this broadcast now you just stay, stay, stay on Jorge well. with us we'll just end the show but just stay there for a moment for us good night everybody good night everyone